All right, good day, class. So this is the continuation of our module discussion. We are already in element 1.33. However, I know already touch on this, but I would like to uh, go through it uh, to emphasize some few points. So element 1.3, this is meet and greet. As uh, what we have already known, I have showed this to you on campus. I was just going to run through this very briefly. So introduction, when the customer arrived, the responsibility of the staff is to promptly greet them with a smile, a smile, and appropriate greetings at the door. So as we all know, being a hospitality person will require uh, being personable. That means you have to smile every time. You have to greet them every time with your smile on your faces. That's how we do it regularly. And remember that the customer should always be treated accordingly and importantly. So you need to, um, I think I already told you that the uh, most important part of a business or in a restaurant is the guest. That's why I keep on emphasizing that the guest is always right. So therefore, you must be able to uh, give your very best in order for us or for you to satisfy them. So moving, moving on. So <clears throat> this is how we welcome the guests on, arri on arrival. So first, read and check res reservations. We all know the basic information that you are going to get. <clears throat> First, if the if the guests, if you ask them, if they do have a reservation, and if they say yes, all you have to do is to check it on the computer, and you'll be able to get their details. Let's say, for example, Mr. Smith, you input Mr. Smith, and everything else will come up. How many tables he requested, how many guests um, will be coming for dinner or lunch, what is the needs or or any special request that they might require so those are the things that is included in a reservation okay next be alert to the opportunity to maximize sales so whenever whenever <coughs> you are already in the uh, on the table you have already seated the guest from the door I have explained that to you from the previous videos I from the door you're going to escort them going to the aisle be able to pull the chair to them and then take off the uh, they got the napkins put it on their lap and then you going to give the menu okay right after giving the menu give them a break give them a chance to talk to each other and then afterwards that is the time you introduce yourself so that is the basic approach when it comes to um, uh, greeting them greeting them and assisting them towards the table and during that particular point before the guest uh, proceed to their uh, to their food experience so we all know this is the time for you to sell some drinks and we all know by now that the the revenue of the restaurant is basically coming from the drinks and coming from the food coming from the drinks that we're selling that is why we as uh, waiters or uh, food handlers must be able to know our product um, by heart you must be able if somebody asks for a red wine and you offer the Robert Mandavi Cabernet then you must be able to tell them <coughs> about the basic information about that particular bottle okay so maxima maximize sales every time not only for wines that can include beers that in can include cocktails or any shooters of the day in any other restaurants we or they they always have a shooter of the day to emphasize to get the appeal of the guest okay or the the cocktail of the day <coughs> sorry 
okay uh, okay that's um, opportunity to maximize sales now greet the guest the greeting on arrival definitely I have mentioned that to you greeting on arrival that is automatic you must be able to greet them good morning sir good afternoon good evening how are you doing today how is your day going is everything okay so you are expected to be the consummate host you are expected to be not only the waiters but a person who cares about them okay so you are going to be that person next special needs special needs by a customer <clears throat> so what are the special needs so special needs will require let's say for a group of six if mr. Smith has reserved for a table of six and he emphasized that he has got two toddlers one two year old and one four year old so you as a food server must be able to have a high chair ready upon their arrival that's how you anticipate needs okay and of course there should be an, a proper coordination from the person by the door and the wait staff itself in that way the person who receives the reservation he or she will say Oscar I have a reservation for six mr. Smith and they need two tables uh, two two high chairs and along with the high chairs what else do you have to provide of course you have to provide the kids menu the kids menu is a special menu for kids in which they can also color they can also write things in that in that in that way the kids will be entertained so those are the basic special needs that you're going to provide for your customers now moving on seat gets guest at nom at nominates or designated table so you're going to sit them so if they ask for just do not mind that one okay if the guest specifically ask for a table by the window for two then you must be able to take them based on their request okay that's why you need to double check if there are any vacant tables by the window if they tell you that they want to have a sharing table for six then you must be able to follow what they ask for if they tell you that they want to be in a isolated area only table for two then you must be able to comply on that and of course along with that before you see the guest you must be able to confirm if you are the person by the door the you must be able to know if they're having a special location if they're having a special diets or special requests so those are the things that you should know and with that information you're going to rely that to the wait staff or the waiter who is going to handle that particular table okay offer pre meal service pre meal service offering premier meal service that can that can include well this could also pertain when it comes to pre meal service it's not only focusing on the uh, the um, car rentals normally once you offer the car rentals this happens after after the meal after the service after lunch then that's the time for you to offer some uh, if they will require some assistance to get a car to so you they they can go home so but here once you say pre meal services so pre meal this actually is pertaining to the drinks that I have told you earlier so before the meal comes which normally is going to take time about roughly about after the waiter finishes the taking order it will take about ideally it will take about 15 minutes for you to be able to get your first course which is the appetizer so before that you must be 
before the before the meal starts you must be able to offer the pre-meal service which is the drinks the drinks could be a beer could be a cocktail it could be a margarita it could be a martini it could be a cosmopolitan okay anything anything that they may ask for so that is a pre-meal service so present menus and wine drink list so right after you give the menu you give in a time and then right after you taking the order that's the time that you're going to ask them if they like something from the bar that could be a wine and along with that you must be able to mention some recommendations so f in my case I normally say uh, would you like something from the bar how about a, a bottle of wine a bottle of Dom, Pri Dom Prignon to um, compliment to compliment your anniversary tonight okay so you must be able to know on how are you going to how are you going to convince them to order for that bottle of wine or some cocktails that's why it is very important if they're having an anniversary oh mr smith i heard it's your anniversary tonight how about a bottle of camus napa reserve Camus Snapa Reserve from California is about 5,000 to 7,000 pesos here in the Philippines. That's why every time you have an opportunity, you must be able to upsell. Okay, moving into the next one. Provide service, advice, and information to guests. So what are the information that you will provide for the guest? Like <coughs> asking questions asking questions like prior to taking the order the international approach would be do you have any allergies in that way you'll be able to know right away before you take the order if somebody's having a uh, lactose free diet meaning to say they cannot have anything with milk or dairy products if somebody tells you that I have a gluten-free diet so you're not you're not going to sell you're not going to serve them anything that has a flour so so on and so forth in which we're going be to be touching on different diets as we go on giving general information so general information might also include like if they are in in a particular area like 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 say you're in a server in Italy and then you give them a, a general information about that particular place you can you can tell that to them okay you're expected to tell that to them whenever whenever you have a time to do it so next information on food <coughs> this is very important information of food as, as I keep on saying we the uh, waiters should be the ambassador of the menu we should be able to know different culinary words that you're going to encounter in a menu so once you say give information on the food you must be able to mention all the un all the unfamiliar terms like scallopini thin slices like um that type of cuts okay and then um, information and food what are the different side dishes if somebody orders for a steak they must be able to tell them the New York strip steak comes with tobacco onions if you say tobacco onions that means it's an onion onion rings okay so you must be able to tell them right away what comes with that particular main course how big is that main course in such a way that they can manage their appetite oh the main course is 16 ounces therefore I should go light on the appetizer so I will be able to have a full appetite when the main course comes okay next giving information on beverages so basically the same thing beverages you as ambassador of the menu you should also be an ambassador of your wine list of your drink list you must be able 
to know what is what is the concoction of screwdriver what's the concoction of uh, martinis what's inside what's what is what is a um, what is the cocktail of the day so those are the information that you should know and of course along with that is the um, the wines whenever you are selling the wines you must be able to know the grape variety if they say Cabernet Sauvignon so you're going to explain that Cabernet Sauvignon is about medium to uh, heavy bodied wine and the aromas and flavors of this has g is in line with dark plums dark cherries and berries so those are the information that you should know by heart and next describe special so it's this the specials could pertain to a particular food okay which in which uh, let's say in a restaurant aside from the set menu you also have a lobster tail which is off the menu so normally specials is something that's off the menu so if, so if you are going to order for it and the um, the different guests would look at on your plate oh what is he having why is that not written on the menu okay yes it's not reading the menu ma'am because that is a special order of the restaurant that is why it is very important that you need to mention the special the specialty of the restaurant whether if that is a pork chop whether if that is a special pasta okay making recommendations we all know you are expected to do s to mention some recommendations let's say for Italian dinner I normally do it this way like tonight our chef's recommendation starts with eggplant parmigiana eggplant parmigiana is a slices of baked eggplant that layered with some tomato sauce and some basil leaves on top followed by minestrone soup minestrone soup is a vegetable italian soup for the main course we have veal scallopini veal scallopini it is is a thin slices that comes with creamy mashed potatoes and marsala wine sauce on the side we also have brassato brassato is a beef braised red wine onions car carrots and celery if you want something light I would suggest you to go for a uh, turbo salt in boca turbo is a white fish embedded with linguine pasta and tomato sauce so that's how I do it so that is the flow of recommendation that you can also do whenever you're introducing the menu okay that's recommendation food and wine combination so when it comes to food and wine combinations you select the wine that you know by heart normally the general rule if the guest is having a red wine you can uh, if the guest is having a steak you can suggest a red wine if the guest is having a seafood you can suggest a Sauvignon Blanc or a Chardonnay okay that's a general rule but as I keep on saying that is not being followed anymore any guest can order a wine based on their preference as we all know based on their preference because they can do the mix or the different matching based on what they want so that means I can have or they can have a steak with Chardonnay or the white wine or um, or a seafood a seafood with a red wine okay what else so that is the food and wine combination uh, additional information and so additional information it could be an information if that is if that is situated the restaurant is situated in a hotel you give them the information right after the dinner man we have a special we have a special piano uh, piano man at the lobby area maybe you could do you would like to join piano man mm. and then you leave the table if they will not require anything else okay so that is all about element 1.4 now we're going to be moving on to element 1.4 1.3 1 and 1.4 now take food and beverage orders <coughs> take beverage orders 
and food. So normally, <coughs> this is how it's going to look like. Taking orders options. First, the role the role of order. So the role of order definitely for you to be able to know how you're going to organize yourself. If you're going to take the table, if it if it is necessary, you start dealing with the kids. Okay, you start um, dealing with the kids. In that way, you can have their food ready. Do not wait for the whole group to to have their orders taken before you serve the meat the kids can always go first okay and then you proceed with the adults and with the order pad uh, I think I already told you from the previous discussion that you are going to mark the ladies with circle if the lady number one is sitting right in front where where you are where you're, where you're looking at lady always has a circle so that is a lady lady so my one and two has circle because they are ladies so that's how you mark a lady on your map with a circle the role of order of course to be able to organize yourself and of course you must be able to serve it based on the sequence of service which is appetizer soup salad Sometimes it can be accompanied by fish or pasta before the main course and then dessert. Guidance in taking order. So in guidance of taking order is right after you finish taking the order, you're going to repeat the order. Ma'am, for the appetizers, you'll be having duck liver pate. For the soup, you'll be having cream of mushroom soup. For the salad, you're going to have Greek salad. And for your main course, you're going to have the tenderloin steak medium. That's how you double check. That's how you confirm if their order that they gave to you is uh, exact information that you have gathered from them. Okay. Next, check customer preference. In checking customer preferences, normally you're going to tell this by nationality so if you're dealing if you're dealing with a guest a guest let's say from India so the guest from India would always like to have curry so without them having asked without them asking you you can tell to the chef chef I have an Indian guest would you mind giving me a bowl of curry if it is available in the kitchen so that's how you check the preferences if you have a regular guest that normally comes to your table and you know mr anderson and mr smith normally having a water with lemon okay normally this happens in a hotel in a restaurant in a hotel in which the guest normally sits in the same table if you always have them if you know that they're always having the the water with lemon then be able to have it ready without them having you to uh, without them uh, asking you okay that's how you uh, be ready with their preferences so operate ordering system according to enterprise procedure <coughs> so you're going to do ordering system based on the company's policies and procedure if they tell you if the company is requiring you to place the uh, order slip on the kitchen like five minutes before then you must be able to comply on that so that is based on the job description <coughs> so before we move on to the next slide I would like to uh, focus on this which is these are the degrees of doneness in which we have already discussed from the previous discussion degrees of doneness this is how it looks like you can have a screenshot if you like to this is rare that's 125 Fahrenheit and of course on top of this we also have blue which is more rare than this and that's a medium rare which a little pink and then medium and then medium well and then well done so that's how it looks like so if whenever you serve the steak you serve the steak in 
before you leave the table you're gonna have to make sure that you're going to ask them would you kindly cut the steak would you kindly cut the steak please if they're cooked the way you like it wait there let them cut it and once they cut it and if they say it's okay you can leave the table okay and if there's something any guest that is uh, or ordered for an uh, donis of steak that is not being followed then make sure you're going to change it based on what they ask for <clears throat> okay sell menu items and drinks proactively so we all know I have already told you from the start sale of additional items additional items could pertain to uh, it could be shooter glasses or souvenir glasses normally the um, restaurants are having some souvenir glasses for you to take home for the guests to take home <coughs> And along the along with that, any additional s additional items can also talk about to a cookbook, a cookbook, like a cookbook in a cruise ships that I've worked for. Those are the additional information or items that we can sell aside from the drinks. We introduce a cookbook. It's going to be signed by the executive chef. This is going to be a this this how we normally sell it. We tell to the guests is a great souvenir that's going to be signed by the executive chef and the maitre d or the head of the F and B department. Okay, in which it it contains all the ingredients okay that you have ordered for the past few days or the for the past few weeks. Weeks depending on how long they stayed in the restaurant. Okay, so as we all know sell, sell, sell whenever you can. <coughs> Now, recommend wines and drinks to accompany selected foods. So this is the food and wine combination. <coughs> As I keep on saying, any guest can mix match the drinks based on their preference. But as, ge as a general rule, you can always suggest a sparkling wine with a fish, sparkling wine with chicken, bold red or Cabernet Sauvignon with steak, Medium red could be a Merlot for the chicken. Light red wine could be a Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir for this uh, slices of meat. Dry white could pertain to a Chardonnay or could be a Pinot Grigio from Italy. And then sweet wine that goes with the cake. It could be anything that is that could be a uh, Riesling or a s white Zinfandel. So that's those are the sweet wines. <coughs> Next, food and wine pairing chart. So this is Chardonnay. These are the white wine Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc. You can take a screenshot of this. Uh, okay, so five, four, three, two, one. Screenshot. Good. And then, so this is the white wines. We have the Chardonnay. We have Sauvignon Blanc. Pinot Grigio. For the reds, we have Cabernet Sauvignon, we have Merlot, we have Pinot Noir, Shiraz, and Zinfandel. Normally, if you're going to arrange this, depending on on the uh, depending on the uh, the strength of the wine, the uh, the strongest wine is or the heavy bodied wine would be for the red wines would be a Shiraz okay let's just disregard the Zinfandel Shiraz that is the uh, heavy bodied wine followed by Cabernet Sauvignon okay Shiraz Cabernet Sauvignon and then it's going to be followed by uh, Merlot and the lightest one would be Pinot Noir okay this is from heavy to light okay we have Shiraz Cabernet Sauvignon we have Merlot and Pinot Noir heavy to light for this for the white wines <coughs> they're going to sorry fix this from light light to heavy W uh, that could be a uh, but it's not written here that could be a 
Sauvignon Blanc is sweet wine. However, the Chardonnay is a dry wine. And so with the sh and so with the Prino Grigio. Okay, light is Sauvignon Blanc, and medium medium light to medium could be the Chardonnay and Pinot Grigio. <coughs> okay, respond to guest queries regarding the menu items and drinks. If somebody asks you about the particular question, you must be able to to answer them nicely. Common cos customer inquiries, handing questions where you don't know the answer. So whenever, when it gets to the point that you don't know the answer, you do not give false information. Instead, you're going to ask your supervisor about the particular question of the guest and then you come back to them <coughs> and provide the right answer. Okay, now this is very important, dietary considerations. Okay, you might want to have a screenshot of this. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> this could be a little confusing in your part. Okay, so we have types of vegetarianism. It's included in your module, but a different term. Okay, once you say lacto-ovo, vegetarian, vegetarianism. So before we go to the, those classification, I would like to focus on the term vegetarian. Vegetarian is an individual who do not eat any animal products, no, no meat of any kinds, no poultry, no beef, no chicken or anything. Okay, that is vegetarian. <coughs> okay, <coughs> now once you say lacto ovo, lacto and lacto means milk, ovo means what? Eggs. Okay, so here that means if you say lacto ovo, the guest can eat can eat milk milk and egg with vegetables and of course once again vegetarianism no meat of any kinds okay lacto ovo i'm a vegetarian plus i can eat milk which is lacto and ovo which is the eggs <coughs> <coughs> sorry now lacto vegetarianism same same thing applies vegetarian no animal products but lacto lacto is the only thing that he or she can consume he can only consume vegetables and milk no meats no eggs including dairy products but okay but lacto is milk that means he or she can have a milk that is lacto okay lacto vegetarianism next ovo vegetarianism ovo means egg so he he can have all kinds of vegetables no meat products but only with eggs at this time no milk okay now moving on the veganism or vegan vegan is a choice of a particular person they feel sorry every time they're eating chicken beef or any kinds or it could be a lamb they feel sorry or even fish they don't eat fish because they believe these animals deserve to live long Therefore, any forms of uh, whenever people kill for animals is, is against their, uh, their belief. So that's why they chose to be vegan. They only eat. They only eat vegetables. No milk and no eggs. Okay. That's vegan. Once again, that is al also included in your, in your modules. We also have pescatorian. Pescatorians are the... Uh, the guest or the individual that only eats fish. Next, 
transfer orders to orders to service and preparation points relay information manually so whenever the waiters is talking to the chef he or she must be able to tell the information clearly so this is what the guest would like to have she wants the steak with french fries instead of the baked potato so you must be able to emphasize this to the chef okay and you must not be able to mix it up because the guest will not be satisfied if you don't bring the order that they ask for next relay information about any special or specials or dietary or cultural requirements when it comes to cultural requirements culture pertains to a particular person from a particular place good example is the coercial coercer meal k o s h e r coercer meal normally this coercer meal are for juice for juice the um, the people from israel in which they are very picky when it comes to their meal they do not they do not eat anything from the menu unless otherwise if that is prepared by um, by a uh, chef that is a Jew because the uh, the kosher meal normally it is made up of cow is made up of sheep meat and some goats okay and then they don't they don't use any silverwares because they believe once that is being being used by any other people i'm not going to use that again that is how they believe that that's their belief that's why whenever you are uh, serving a jew you must be able to provide them a plastic utensils instead of the silver wares so once again good example of this is the kosher meal <coughs> now adjusting setting covers to reflect the menu item selected so so adjusting this the cutlery so i have briefly introduced to you the set of the cutleries which normally it's from uh, outwards going to inwards you have the appetizer knife you have the appetizer fork appetizer knife appetizer fork okay and then it could be next would be the soup followed by appetizer or uh, followed by the salad salad knife and salad fork and then followed by the main course knife and main course fork so depending on what the guest has asked for you're going to provide them the, sp the specific cutlery that they will need so if you have a complete setup and the guest did not order for a fish take out the fish knife and fish fork if the guest orders for a steak be able to replace the uh, regular dinner knife with a steak knife so you're going to adjust the setup based on what they have ordered and of course that also applies with the glassware whenever you have a complete set of glasses in which you have the water goblet water goblet here and then you have the red wine and then you have the white wine so whenever you have those three glasses and the guest is not having or the guest only having red wine so be able to take out the white wine glass and same thing applies if the guest is not having red wine and be able to take out the red wine or if, if the guest is not having any of the wines and he or she decided just to have a cocktail take out two glasses those two glasses you ask them ma'am sir can I take the glasses that's it that's how you do it next adjusting service wear so I have uh, uh, mentioned that next process for adjusting settings so basically the same thing you're going to adjust it based on what they ask for. we are almost finished next last one liaise with other staff 
or coordinate with other staff regarding an intended service delivery. So, com common communication channels. So normally, the waiters takes the order from the guest, and then the waiter is going to place the order to the kitchen. He or she is going to coordinate with the kitchen staff nicely, especially whenever, whenever, whenever a guest is having a special order. You are only expected to talk to the executive chef when it comes to special order. You're going to have to make sure that whenever the guest is having a gluten-free diet, your food that you're going to take is free of any flour. That talks about the sauce. The sauce, sauce should be free of flour. The vegetables should not have any contact with any flour. Okay. And any any other any other vegetables that is on the plate should be gluten free. And you can only make uh, you can only be sure if you're going to coordinate with the executive chef or the sous chef. Do not trust any other cooks because they are not really knowledgeable when it comes to this. And remember, you cannot blame the cook if they give you the wrong order. You are going to serve the food. Whatever you have on the plate, if they give you the right order or wrong order and you serve it, the blame is going to be on you. In the worst case scenario, you can be sued if you don't take the diets properly. That is why you really need to double check, triple check for you to be sure when it comes to dealing with special orders. And of course, providing assistance. So basically, that's the most important thing. S special orders, you ha it has to be coordinated properly. Okay, thank you very much. That's the end of element 1.4, but it doesn't end there. We are going to continue to move on element 1.5. By the way, thank you for your classmates who have uh, helped me in uh, providing these wonderful slides. I'm not going to mention their names. Okay, now moving on to element 1.5. Serve food or to serve the food. This is the very essence of the course. Must be able to know how to serve the drinks properly. And likewise, you must be able to know how to serve the food nicely. Now, serving food. Number one, we need to do it quickly. But don't get me wrong, man. Doing it quickly should be in in a proper coordination okay you don't do it quickly and then you're going to have some spillages on the rim of the plate do it quickly in such a way that you'll be able you'll be able to serve it okay you'll be able to serve the hot food hot it's very important and you'll be able to serve your guests at the same time that's the goal for you to be able to serve them at the same time and for them to be able to finish at the same time Next, do it professionally. In any other departments, for you to be able to be successful in that particular department that you're working, is for you to, to do your job professionally. How are you going to do that? We always have this what we call job description. The job description is normally given by your supervisor in which it is the Bible of the organization. It talks about the rule number one to ten, the things that you're going to follow, the things, the proper way of serving the guest. Okay, if you are going to follow that job description, then you can assure to yourself that you are doing your job professionally. Number three, make sure that items are correct. So, as I keep on saying, you cannot pick up the food if you do, if you're not sure that that is the lamp in some case the pork can look like a turkey if that is a or or it could be a uh, turkey breast so you must be able to know that you're picking up you're picking up the right food if the guest orders for a pork make sure you're picking up the pork because sometimes it gets confu confusing 
they could be similar in appearance. <coughs> of course, so once again, you must be able to make sure that the items are correct. The items that you're serving should be correct. Next, serve bread rolls at the table. Th so this is a part of the mise en place. Mise en place, you need to complete to put on your table the bread. As I keep on saying, we Filipinos, the counterpart of bread in every or in a different uh, nationality is our rice. The Europeans, Americans, eat their meal with the bread. Therefore, you must be able to keep an eye on the bread. Okay? If you think that the get the the bread is already empty, the bread basket is already empty, without the guest having asked you, you must replace it right away. That is how you, you contribute to a uh, service excellence. So bread, of course, at uh, the beginning of the meal, it takes away, away hunger pains and it accompanied with starters. So it goes with any starter, especially with duck. Once you serve a duck liver pate, English people love to eat, love to eat the duck liver pate with a roll, a bread roll. So must be able to have that in front of them whenever you're serving it. And here, an added element of service. Added element of service could be anything that they might ask for. Next, alternatives to serving bread. So alternatives to serving bread or uh, in addition, I can say a safer way in addition to serving bread could be a chips, okay, and it can be a nuts. So of course, it is depending on the organization. Every organization has got its own way of serving. If your organization tells you that you can serve the chips together with the uh, bread, then be able to do it so. As you can see, we have this thing here. This is called sorbet. Sorbet is a palate cleanser. Okay, normally, sorbet is an, an, an additional course that is going to serve to you before your main course. So after you finish appetize the appetizer, soup, salad, then sorbet is going to be served first. Sorbet washes your palate. It washes your palate for you to be able to be ready for your main course. Okay, that is sorbet. Plate carrying techniques. So I am going to be um, showing this to you whenever we're on campus. But at this time, I would like to practice it on your own. That's how you do it. You're going to place it. Okay, you're going to place it on the on the index finger. Should have a contact with the rim. Okay, and like I said, I'll, I'm going to show this to you on the compass. And the the only thing that you should be sure of is that you must not be able to use the thumb. I don't have a plate here, that's why I cannot show you. You must be able to have. You must not be able to show or to put the thumb on the plate. But hold on, I'm going to get the plate. Alright, so this is a plate. So normally, the uh, any plate has got a rim. So here, this is how we're going to do it. No contact with the thumb to be hygienic. And then I'm going to place it here. This is how it's going to look like underneath. Okay. Ah. Okay. Anyway, I'll be able to show that to you, uh, and I'll I'll be able to show that to you on compass, like I said. Okay, be able to practice that on your own, and I should be able to check that as well. Now, whenever you, whenever you have served the food, we have what we call the three-minute check. That is the maximum time that you must be able to check the guest 
but normally the safest way of doing or checking the guest satisfaction is right after you serve the food let's say you started with the appetizer you serve them you give them maybe a minute and then you come back is everybody happy with the starter that's the safest way of doing it because the three minutes could be a little long so to be safer but three minutes is still accepted but to be safer do it in do it in in a minute be able to come back check the food is everybody's happy and then that's the only time that you can tell that they're enjoying a particular course so check the meals or uh, check the meals to check the meals or to check the customer satisfaction and say how are your meals is everybody happy how is, ev is everybody happy happy with the appetizer is everybody happy with the soup me in my case I approach them I ask them is everybody happy because if you're going to ask them is everybody okay they can say they're okay but okay means that they're not happy o okay could the 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 word okay could um, the word okay is a lot different from being happy because I can, he, they can be okay with the food but it doesn't mean they're happy but it doesn't mean they're enjoying it that's why you have to check it uh, every now and then do it after a few minutes of serving the food so that's how you check it now handling problems whenever you encounter a particular problem let's say if somebody is, was complaining about the steak was too tough what are you going to do just tell them okay sir I'm going to change that do not argue with them no it cannot be tough the, our steak is fresh our steak is fresh the, the, there's no it can be tough that's not how you do it you as a waiter you're not supposed to solve the problem on your own instead you need to fix the problem so one way of fixing it is to change the main course the next one the meal is cold when somebody complains about the cold food then same thing applies remove the main courses and be able to serve them what they ask for uh, special diets and occasions okay uh, I've, I've mentioned this to you be able to take note of the special diets and I was, and of course along with that you must be able to give an alternative solution let's say the guest is not enjoying the fish you say you you ask them whenever they they're during their their main course you ask them is everybody's happy is everything okay some of the guests would be shy to tell them that they're not enjoying the food if you see that they're not eating they only finished have and they stop eating the main course you can approach them you can approach them um, distinctly and whisper and say you can say ma'am I noticed that you're not finishing your fish uh, would you like to choose something else so that's how you do it remember you need to be there you need to know what's happening okay so you need to adjust um, suggest an alternative solution by changing the main course and of course to fix it right away okay now we're going to be moving on to element 1.6 oh we're almost finished element 1.6 serving drinks serving drinks different kind of drinks here we have martini glass we have the wine glasses okay next in serving drinks it says here serve pre-dinner drinks to the table collect the beverage so this uh, this is how you go you are going to organize your tray make sure you're going to get the balance make sure if this is a tray you, you're going to get the balance of the tray and then you place the drinks at the middle first until such time that you'll be able to fill up the tray and get the balance of it it's okay to use your right hand as a support if you are not confident to serve it at uh, using your one hand it is okay to have it a support okay next 
be able to get the balance of the tray while collecting the beverages and then loading the drinks tray make sure you get a nice balance okay so I keep on saying carry the drinks tray okay carry it like this uh, placing the beverage on the tables and be able to just imagine if you're going if you have this full, full tray and you have a very tiny space so it will not be easier for you to serve it uh, on the guests. So the best way to do it is to place it on the service station, okay, and be able to serve it one by one. So it, it's going to be a lot safer that way. And of course, whenever they, the guests had a, a sip of their wines or uh, drinks, you must be able to check them. Are you happy with the drinks? As, are you enjoying it? How's your martini, sir? Is it good? Yeah, they're going to ask us. How's the red wine, sir? How's the Cabernet Sauvignon? So that's how you check their drinks as well. Serving wines. And serving wines, this, this is very important. These are the important things that you must be able to check. Check the bottle condition. And checking the bottle condition, you must be able to check. You must be able to check if the bottles in good condition bottle good condition means that the label of the wine is free from any uh, tears no scratches the bottle of the wine is free from any damages the bottle of the wine should be nice and sealed so those are the things that you can check by your eyes okay check the bottle condition checking the selection in checking the selection you must be able to know that same wine, same names of wines, has got different grape variety. Once you say Franciscan Merlot, Franciscan wine also comes with Cabernet, Merlot, and Pinot Noir. So if you are too busy, you didn't check the grape variety, if the guests order for a Cabernet, and you order the Merlot, so what do you think is going to happen? You're going to end up paying for the wine. That is why it's very important if the guest orders for a Cabernet, check the bottle, Franciscan Merlot. This is what the, the guest ask for, so this is what I'm going to serve. Okay, You must check the grape variety. Oh, check the appropriate glasswares. We all know expensive wines must be served with a glamorous glass. Once the wine's wine become expensive, it should be served in a glamorous wine, like this. Or it could be, uh, it could be served in a decanter if the guest ask you. Okay, the decanter is normally being used in a wine that is that the vintage is about 10 years or 20 years or more okay that is how the, the 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 reason of decanting the wine is for the sediments to settle down for the sediment for the sed sed sediments to go at the bottom and then once the waiter pours it it will only give the uh, the wine and the leaving while leaving the sediments at the bottom so that is the purpose of the canter and of course to get its its full body and aromas of the wine <coughs> sorry presenting the wine so as i keep on saying and presenting the wine this is how you present it, present the wine you have a round round thing at the bottom in which i'm going to show you Okay, I have here the bottle of Antares, Cabernet Sauvignon, or this Merlot, in which, in, in presenting the wine, you're going to hold it like this. The hole is for your middle and ring finger. That's how you present it. And they say, you must be able to carry the wine the way you carry the baby. So make sure make sure you're going to hand it nicely don't hold it like this 
That's a big no-no. That is very unethical. And the guest can tell you right away that you do not know how to open the wine. If you hold it like this, you must be able to hold it like this. Okay, like this. Okay, that's how you do it. And of course, you proceed right after presenting the wine. There are three things that you're going to tell them. The name of the wine, the grape variety. This this case, this is <coughs> ready drink the wine, sorry. Antares Merlot 2020. So one, two, three, and Chile. The fourth information could be where does it come from? The name of the wine, grape variety, which is Merlot, and then the vintage, followed by where it was made, which is Chile. Okay, so pouring the wine, pouring the wine, whenever you're pouring the wine, you're going to pour it like this. I'm going to show it to you on uh, compass. You're going to pour it, and then you twist and make sure, make sure that there will be no spillage on the table. Whenever you have spillage, then that is not the proper way of doing it. The guests will not like it whenever you're pouring the wine with spillage. Next, after dinner drinks, we have special coffees. Any other special coffees? Uh, spirits with spirits and liquors. Liquors are, s are drinks with flavor. Spirits with flavor. However, before I go on to that, I would like to point out here. Here are the types of coffee drinks. We're going to uh, pick some of which. We have Cafe Americano. When you say Americano, this is called, this is just espresso with hot water. The counterpart of Americano in Australia is Long Black. Long Black. Espresso with hot water. Next, espresso. Espresso, we all know you are coffee lovers, some of you. Espresso is just coming out from coffee machine. The concentrated coffee bean converted into liquid. That is espresso. Okay, in Australia, it's called short black. Next, we have macchiato. How about macchiato? Macchiato, on the other hand, is typically the same with espresso but with foam or with foam foam made up of milk okay and then flat white flat white that's how they call it in Australia flat white is a latte in the United States okay and here cappuccino is cappuccino and then we have Irish. Irish coffee is basically a regular coffee mixed with some Jameson whiskey, with some whipped cream and sugar rim. Okay, here we have affogato. Affogato is espresso with vanilla ice cream and some caramel on top. So like I say, like I keep on saying, you must be able to show it, show to the guest you need to entice them even if they tell you that they're not going to have a coffee but if you're going to do this in front of them 99.9% .9 they're going to order for it because it looks delicious and it tastes delicious okay that's another special coffee now we're gonna move on to the next one special coffee still so these are the the flavor that's this this is written on your modules we have Jamaican coffee is basically mixed with Tia Maria. Tia Maria is a coffee liqueur. Mexican coffee is mixed with Kahlua. F uh, French coffee mixed with some brandy. Roman coffee is mixed with some Galliano. Galliano is, or this one has got a vanilla and anise flavor. Next we have Irish coffee. Irish coffee, that's what I've told you, 
it's mixed with Jameson whiskey. Okay. Uh, Normandy. When you say Normandy, this is one has got a uh, Calvados. Calvados or uh, apple brandy. And the last one would be uh, Caribbean. Caribbean is a coffee mixed with rum. So those are the examples of special coffee. Next, clear the glasses and beverage items. You are going to remove everything on the table that is already empty. If the red wine is finished, then ask them nicely. Ma'am, can I have your glass, please? Okay. You're not supposed to leave it on the table when it's empty. Then that applies to any any other glasses. It can be a juice glass. It can be a mocktail glass. It can be a martini glass. Once it's already empty, collect the empty glasses and offer a new one. Would you like another martini? Would you like another brandy? Would you like another bottle of wine? Would you like another beer? So on and so forth. And thank you very much. That ends the um, discussion of element 1.3 to 1.6. So thank you very much. I hope to see you soon. And uh, yeah, thank you. I'll see you. Bye.